Thank you, Taylor. Hi, my name is Taylor, and I like to think that I can be pretty cool and funny sometimes. I'm currently a senior in college, but I'll talk more about that later. I enjoy doing yoga, thrifting, and playing with my two cats, and I'm pretty positive that potatoes are single-handedly the best food on the planet. <laughs> also, about three years ago, I was raped by two men on my college campus. Now, to be honest, I really struggled with coming up with an intro for this talk because while I become really comfortable in discussing this topic, I know that we, in general, aren't comfortable in hearing about it. It's hard to sit there and listen to someone say they've been assaulted, whether it's physically, verbally, or sexually. It's worse when it's someone you know, and devastating when it's someone you love. And because of that, we don't react very well to it. We get so uncomfortable to the point where we'll cringe and squirm around and do everything we can to avoid eye contact and achieve this complete avoidance. Sometimes we'll even mentally distract ourselves by categorizing the statistics into something I like to call just another's. Just another bullying story. Just another harassment story. Just another rape story. But that's a natural reaction because it's so hard to relate to trauma at an individual level. And even though we've all experienced some form of trauma, we'll never fully be able to relate to each other because my victimization story is different from yours. And that's okay. But what I've learned is even though our traumas are very unique and completely our own, our recovery follows a collective journey towards peace. Now, I've heavily involved myself in the field of advocating throughout my college journey, and I started by educating myself on statistics that we always hear but never really understand. And with time, I've come across 68 individuals, both female and male, who have disclosed their story of sexual assault to me. And the statistics I once studied looked a lot less like numbers and a lot more like faces. So three years and 68 stories later, I've only found one consistency within each disclosure, and that's the fact that everyone's story is different, no matter how similar the experience or emotions were. So different to the point where even I found it hard to relate. For example, some were assaulted by three or four people. I was assaulted by two. When reporting these instances, some were met with immediate action and support, while others were interrogated with questions like, well, how much were you drinking? What were you wearing and why were you even alone to begin with? As if this was our fault. But speaking with survivors has really opened my eyes to understanding the vulnerabilities we all have and understanding how trauma and recovery works. I've been better, I've been able to step back, listen, understand, and then cater my response in where they are in their own journey towards peace. Now, this peace follows four distinct phases. The first phase is the incident. And the incident is when the assault actually happens, or the days, weeks, or months that follow, when they may still be in a state of disbelief. Personally, for me, this lasted around six weeks as I was overcome with complete hopelessness and confusion, just silencing me completely from the world. This is probably the hardest phase for family and friends to relate to because we have this natural tendency to say or do anything we can to make this person feel better and just to try and take away their pain by offering phrases like, well, you'll be fine, just try not to think about it and move on and we'll get better. But what does better even mean? We don't want to ask for help because we're so scared that asking for help is a form of weakness which takes away from this idea that we're no longer invincible. We're still so confused as to what has happened and we're fighting the urge to say something to later be labeled with a stigma that will take away from this identity that we've literally spent our whole life building. No one wants sympathy. No one wants to be known as a boy who got bullied, the girl with bulimia, the bipolar boy, or in my case, the girl who got raped. We've heard all these statistics before, but nothing could really prepare us for anything like this. The second phase is trying to live normally again and finding normalcy within your life. And mine started by feeling lost in a place I used to call home. It changed my definition of life, and I tried to eat like I used to eat, study like I used to study, sleep like I used to sleep, but it all just felt so impossible. I constantly felt myself on edge as though a ghost of who I used to be, always alert on the faces around me, feeling as though I could never feel safe in a crowded room again. Thinking about being alone was terrifying, but being in a crowded room was equally as frightening, so then I was constantly questioning where I even belonged. 
But in this phase, I found that there are moments where you can you challenge yourself to speak up about the internal war going on inside of your head. And I knew if I put myself out there, nothing was guaranteed. But I felt like if I used the power of my voice, then it would connect me back to the only way I felt like my old self again. I was just so tired of living this life and hiding behind a burden of who I truly was. The third phase is one of acceptance and understanding. And I remember when someone disclosed to me about their assault, we talked about how this trauma is never going to disappear. It's with us forever, regardless of how we feel about it. And she mentioned that it's not only going to affect our relationships with our future husband, but our future children. And I thought, how am I going to come to tell my child about this? And how am I going to tell them to never treat someone the way their mothers were treated? And then we thought, and we realized, it came down to the choices we made. Because you know what? Our choices are with us forever, too. And I hated asking for help. But eventually, I went to the doctors. I got tested. I went to therapy. And I understood that the steps that I needed to take were there. But I actually had to force myself to take them. And taking them made everything so much more real. But it also made me constantly relive everything that was going on. But with time, I got to a point where I was OK with who I was living with. And I felt as though I was neither hiding nor running anymore. And I came to the realization that the moment you can tell your story without finding yourself crying is the moment that you finally accepted what has happened to you. Now, the fourth and final phase is finding peace. And when you find peace is when you can draw and work from it. And I find peace through publicly speaking. I love telling my story. But I also know I'm not like every human. And you may find peace through poetry, through art, through dance. Whatever it is that brings you comfort, there's no wrong way to find peace as long as it pushes you towards a better self. We have to learn how to gauge the power of our peace and trying not to do everything but doing nothing. And <laughs> It'll be difficult, and it will be long, and it'll probably even last forever. So reminders help. And for me, I got my favorite quote tattooed by Liz Keebler-Ross, tattooed on my arm as a constant reminder in moments where I couldn't feel peace. And it goes, the most beautiful people we have known are those who have known defeat, known suffering, known struggle, known loss, and have found their way out of the depths. These persons have an appreciation sensitivity, and understanding of life that fills them with compassion, gentleness, and a deep loving concern. Beautiful people do not just happen. So if there's one thing I've learned, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so if there's one thing I've learned, it's that we can achieve peace, and we deserve peace. And no matter how heinous the act is that we're trying so desperately to run away from, believe in yourself because peace is out there. But we have to want it, and we have to fight for it. And eventually, we'll be reminded of just how beautiful and powerful we once were and always have been. Thank you. <laughs>